There is a miracle that occurs in India every year, and the country's physiography determines how this miracle plays out in any given region. This miracle is the primary source of livelihoods for about 58% of India's households, and is so beautiful that countless paintings, songs, and other forms of creative expression have paid tribute to it. It is, of course, the great Indian monsoon. The monsoon is what is responsible for the incredible abundance in this part of the world and the reason why more people are living inside this circle than outside of it. This image went viral a few years ago thanks to Reddit user Valerie Pierce who created it. The Himalayas create the necessary conditions for monsoon as they act as a barrier against the colder environment of Central Asia and keep India warm. They also keep rain-heavy monsoon clouds from going north of the mountains. The other physiographic feature that strongly contributes to the occurrence of the South Indian monsoon is the Tar Desert, the heat of which causes a low pressure that attracts the monsoon clouds. If you think deserts are deserted, then the Tar may th make you think twice. It's teeming with wildlife and people. In fact, it's actually more densely populated than the US states of Pennsylvania, Ohio, or California. The annual monsoon generally begins in either late May or early June on India's southwest coast, splitting into two branches that move north towards the Himalayan foothills. One branch moves along the Arabian Sea, along India's west coast, and the other moves across the Bay of Bengal on India's east coast before reaching the coasts of West Bengal and Bangladesh. This second branch then moves westwards after meeting the Himalaya, finally reconverging with the first branch over Delhi, Punjab and Himachal Pradesh. The monsoon withdraws from India by October, but picks up moisture along the Bay of Bengal, resulting in a second monsoon over southern India in October to November. The mountain ranges known as the Western and Eastern Ghats run alongside the plateau formed by the Deccan Traps. The Ghats lift the monsoon clouds, generating the relief rainfall which gives parts of central and especially southern India its fertile landscape and tropical rainforests. Nearly the entire subcontinent receives monsoon rainfall, albeit to different extents, while the west coast and northeastern region of the country sees over 150 inches of annual rainfall. Uh, northwestern areas of the country and interior areas of the Deccan Plateau often receive very little rainfall. In fact, the wettest place on earth uh, where there's more rainfall than anywhere else is in northeastern India in the state of Meghalaya. The entire agricultural calendar in India is governed by the monsoon. The particular trajectories of the monsoon and India's varied topography make India a land of agricultural plenty. The monsoon is probably the key driver of the Indian economy because so many people rely on agriculture for their livelihoods. In fact, about half of India is arable land. So despite being a third the size of the United States, it actually has about the same amount of arable land. India also has more irrigated land than any country on Earth, more than China and twice as much as the US. The natural trinity of sunshine, water and fertile land, Surya, Jal and Bhumi in Sanskrit, enables much of India to have two main agricultural seasons, running from June to September, known as Karif, and October to January, Rabi with many irrigated areas actually able to squeeze a third season from February to May, known as Zaid. Multiple crops are available in each of these harvests. Rice, maize, millet, chilies, soya beans, sugarcane and cotton are just some of the things grown during the Karif monsoon season and harvested in October, November. Wheat, barley, Tomatoes, onions, potatoes, sunflowers and more are grown in the winter to be harvested in spring. This is the time when mustard fields in all their golden glory brighten up northern India, a backdrop to many a Bollywood dance sequence. Succulent pumpkins, cucumbers and watermelons appear on our neighbourhood vegetable sellers carts in May and June, not to mention the most beloved of all Indian fruits, the mango, which is grown almost all over India. There are literally thousands, or certainly hundreds, of varieties, and everyone has a favourite. The Alfonso, grown in Goa and Maharashtra, seems to be the most desired amongst my friends and family. 
Many of India's festivals are, of course, related to the agricultural cycle and are thus historically dependent upon the monsoon as well. These festivals may be known by different names in different parts of the country, but most celebrate the abundance that comes with a good harvest thanks to a good monsoon. Fortunately, the predictions for this year, 2016, are that India is going to have above average rainfall. It's going to be a good monsoon, so hopefully people are going to uh, be able to grow a lot of crops and incomes will rise and that will give a boost to the Indian economy. We'll be talking more about the festivals of India, particularly the ones associated with monsoon, uh, during week four 